Okay, Sri Hari Lord Sri Krishna resided at Hastinapur for a few months to pacify his relatives and please his own Subhad sister Subhadra. So that's all parts first four. When Krishna was to start from Dwarka, his own kingdom after the battle of Kurukshetra, and Yudhisthira being enthroned, but to oblige the request of Maharaj Yudhisthira and to show special mercy to Bhishma Dev, Lord Krishna stopped at Hastinapur, the capital of the Pandavas. The Lord decided to stay especially to pacify the grief king as well as to please sis, please Subhadra, sister of Lord Krishna. Krishna was especially to be Subhadra was especially to be pacified because she lost her only son, Abhimanyu, who was just married. The boy left his wife, Uttara, mother of Pariksha Maharaj. The Lord is always pleased to satisfy his devotee in any capacity. Only his devotees can play the part of his relatives. The Lord is absolute. <laughs> Taksun militam yena tusma ishri gurudina maha. Maum vishnu padaya krishna prasnaya bhutale shri bhakti bhakti vedanta swami tinamane. Namaste saraswati devi vega udavani prachadine nirvase sasunya vadi pasyapya devi sasarine. Jai shri krishna jay tanya prabhu nityanamna sri advaita gadahar shri vasadi hor bhakta vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. The Lord is by nature very kind towards devotees, and in general, He's kind to all living entities. He treats everyone equally, but He shows special consideration to those who render devotional service, just like a father who. Uh, has many children in the family and loves all the children equally. But if the ones who obey get more attention than the ones who disobey, so in the same way that the living entities in the material world don't have any regard for the Lord, nor do they obey in his instructions. So he takes care of them as a dutiful father, but he doesn't give them uh, his personal attention because they're not interested in it and they could never appreciate it anyway here subhadra her son her uh, her uh, son abhimanyu who um, was killed unfairly by the pandavas by the kurus in a bat battle the boy was only 16 years old and he had just got married. Hmm. So Krishna was scheduled to leave, but he stayed longer. Uh, he also wanted to give a little more time for Yudhisthira to get settled onto the throne after hearing from Bhishma Dev. <laughs> because Bhishma Dev uh, spoke you know, the science of how to rule the kingdom on his deathbed at the instructions of the Lord within the heart. And he uh, spoke those words that gave inspiration to Yudhishthir, who was lamenting that he had to take the throne at the expense of so many lives that were lost in the battle. But of course, that, that battle was not was fought on the will of the Lord as the last resort. Nobody wanted the war, even the Lord wanted, but the Lord wanted the Pandavas to rule rightly, and therefore they were opposed, and everything that was done to try to uh, pacify the Kurus and allow the, the, the Pandavas to have their right, right, rightly situation uh, was rejected by the Kurus, so there was no resort. 
and accept war. But Maharajuda still, by being soft-hearted at nature, was, even though he was a powerful Shatri, no close to that. <laughs> uh, was a powerful warrior, uh, didn't, uh, <clears throat> he felt responsible for all of the deaths, but that wasn't the case. But in order for him to understand, don't do anything. Uh, well, for him to understand the situation, uh, Krishna stayed a little bit longer and had Bhishma Dev speak to him. And Yudhisthira, even though he heard from Bhishma Dev, his heart was not completely changed or pacified. So Krishna stayed a little longer. So you see how Krishna shows special favor to his devotees. He always wants them to be happy. Prabhupada would always say that uh, Krishna wants everyone to be happy and especially his devotees because his devotees are by rightly situated in the position of happiness to engage in devotional service means to be happy <laughs> means to be on the platform away from the three modes of material nature onto the pseudo platform the spiritual goodness platform where there are no material uh, reasons for, for uh, suffering Suffering comes by way of the material energy when devotees are transcendental to that. So they accept difficulties, but they're always happy. Why? Because they're engaged in devotional service. They're chanting the holy names of the Lord. They are rightly situated in their position as eternal servants of the Lord. And therefore, they're always happy. <laughs> and susukam kartavavyayam, the whole process of bhakti is the process of happiness. And Krishna always is always concerned that his devotees are happy and engage nicely in devotional service. And if there's some anomaly, he works through the to his spiritual energies to help his devotees um, come to the platform of being situated nicely in his devotional service. Although we make all we make the efforts, and he's supporting our efforts by helping us. Uh, establish our relationship with him. So the, Krishna is very kind by nature. Um, and this is one of the qualities that devotees must understand that no matter what happens in the world, it is not the fault of the Lord. It's the, it's the fault of the living entity's misdirected desires. But Krishna is kind by nature. He's not unkind. And he doesn't cause anyone suffering. The suffering comes by way of wrong desire, wrong activity. And sometimes people like to blame Krishna. Sometimes even devotees, when they get put into severe, difficult situations, they may also find themselves uh, wondering why Krishna has done that to them. But Krishna doesn't do that to them. Krishna doesn't. Krishna is all a is always uh, showing the devotees through the spiritual master, through the material energy, and even directly, how the devotees can make progress in devotional service and attain to the platform of eternal happiness. So Sukham Kartavavyayam is the Bhagavad Gita verse in this ninth chapter, which explains that this process by nature brings great happiness. Why? Because it's directly connected to the soul and therefore, the soul is by nature always happy. And when the external and when the external facility of the bhakti enters into the life of a devotee, it awakens that that dormant happiness in the heart in the soul's existence, and the devotee becomes happy. And also, though the devotee also becomes chit and full of knowledge, also knowledge and happiness automatically there in devotion service. <clears throat> so one has to just stay engaged in devotional service. The problem is our mind is always taking us this way and that way. <clears throat> and because we listen to the mind, we follow the directions of the mind, we believe what the mind says, and therefore we find ourselves in, uh, in, a, in a mental state that is created simply by uh, by the, the combination of the external energies. That's all. 
the devotee has to deal with the external energy, but he knows that uh, the external energy works under the control of the Lord. The modes of material nature are controlled by Krishna. And therefore, if a devotee just stays engaged in material, spiritual energy, then the material energy takes a back seat in the life of the devotee. But when we start to contemplate and start to practice activities that are connected with material energy, we can expect that we will have to struggle in order to sort out our situation according to that material energy. But sometimes that is necessary due to the responsibilities we have in the material world. But one should always try to understand that Krishna is always there. And Krishna is the closest thing to us. He sits in the heart of each and every living entity, guiding us, directing us, protecting us. That is Krishna. So you see how he, go, he, he shows it here by the external example with Maharaj Yudhisthira and with his sister Subhadra, as it says here, um, he also wanted to show special mercy to Bhishma Dev by allowing Bhishma Dev to speak to Maharaj Yudhisthira. So behind the scenes of all activities is the hand of the Supreme Lord conducting everything. If we simply follow his instructions and guidance and always adhere in, in devotional service, we will always be in the best position to receive the mercy and be free from the effects of the material energy. And it says here also that the devotees uh, have a special relationship with Krishna. They play the part of his relatives also. That's interesting. Uh, Krishna, Krishna doesn't have a mother. He doesn't have a father. He is the mother and father of everyone. Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, and he is the life and soul of all that exists, Krishna Dana Pran. So he has no relatives, but he adopts these different relatives who play the part of his devotee in order to practice his leelas in the, in this, in the material world. And all he does that just to show special mercy. So there's an intimacy that becomes connected. Just like if you're a wife of someone or a husband of someone, there's an intimate relationship. If you're a friend of someone, there's a there's a such there's a such there's intimacy there, but not as much as it is between her wife and husband. If you're an acquaintance with someone. It's not as much as a friend. Or if you don't know the person, there's, there's not much relationship at all. But so according to the degree of relationship, the intimacy is also. Uh, therefore, we have an intimate relationship with Krishna because everything about our existence centers around Krishna. And we can also um, categorize that relationship when we aspire to worship him in a certain way, according to the different relationships that are available, such as servant, friend, parental, um, caretaker, or even a conjugal lover. So um, to have these relationships with Krishna, of course, these relationships are eternal. They're part of our existence in the spiritual world also. But they also develop in relationship in the material world as we practice Krishna consciousness. And so Krishna allows for devotees to become more and more intimate. And what when one becomes intimate with the Lord, then that intimacy is the most satisfying for all. If your best friend is God, if your lover is God, if your parent, if you are the parent of God or God is your parent, then how intimate is that? <laughs> we also have these relationships in the material world. And that intimacy sort of binds one to a certain responsibility to the, the different persons playing those roles. So we have an obligation in that intimacy. So in that same way, when we when we develop these intimacy, we have that obligation to serve the Lord according to that intimate relationship. 
And that is very pleasing because in the material world, no one can have a perfect relationship. But in the spiritual world, there's no such thing as imperfection. Imperfection is something that is part of the material world only. And so there's no imperfection in devotional service. Just like if, you're, if your devotional service has not reached perfection, still it's perfect on the level that you achieved it. You can't say I ha I'm imperfect in my devotional service. No, that doesn't, that, that kind of word statement doesn't have any meaning. So whatever level of relationship you have developed, that's perfect. But you can increase that perfection into a higher and higher intensity of that of that relationship. And then that perfection becomes greater and greater. So that's the nature of spiritual. It's unlimited, whereas material is full of duality. And duality means limitation. And duality means what we say opposite. So there's no there's no suffering in the in the spiritual world. There is no imperfection in the spiritual realm. Everything is perfect because everything is conducted by the internal energy of the Lord, which is his pure, perfect energy. Krishna's energies work perfectly. So once you to try to establish a relationship with the Lord and loving devotional service, our relationships in this material world are ephemeral. They have some value in the sense they establish us in the material, uh, social uh, interaction, which allows us to fulfill certain material needs. But material needs are not real needs. They're something that is, they come and go. So these relationships also come and go. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, I was just reading yesterday and also reread it this morning where that anger can be used in three, three ways. One, um, anger can, can be used in three ways. Sometimes you say, can devotees get, become angry? Bhakti Siddhanta says three ways that you can use anger. One, is against your own laziness and devotional service. So you get angry with yourself for being lazy. And that might help you to get out of that state of laziness. Two, you can get angry at your relatives if they oppose you in your process of devotional service. And three, you can get angry at the demons before causing so much trouble in the world. So these are three ways <laughs> which you can show righteous anger. So here you'll see how intimate Krishna is with his parts and parcels, especially those who have a special relationship with him. He'll change his plans in order to somehow rather see the need of his devotees. He always keeps his devotees first. And his own personal desires, he keeps second. Sometimes he fulfills his personal desires by serving his devotees at the same time. He's expert at fulfilling more than one desire at a time. That's the quality of the Supreme Lord. He can accomplish many things with one activity. But here it's become somewhat contrary. He, has, he wants to leave to go to Dwarka. And so, but he can't leave because. There is a need, it's still in Hastinapur, so he's staying just to satisfy Yudhisthira and Subhadra. Okay, I'll stop there and can open it up for questions. Thank you, Maharaj. Can you hear me now? No? Yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. It's so nice to hear from you again. And uh, we can see that you are in Slovenia back. So welcome back to uh, Europe side. <laughs> uh, Silpesh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, thank you for your association. Yeah. We missed you. 
Um, we, you know, you talk about we have the eternal relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world. Here in the material world, if I am thinking, for example, that Krishna is my friend and he's my confidant, is that my mental speculation or is that maybe the eternal relationship coming out in the material world? Well, there's a way to process that in a practical way, and that is to, is to uh, you can refer to Krishna as your friend, but if you, to be ultimately established in Sakya Ras as a relationship, then you have to follow what is called a certain process. And that means you take shelter of Krishna's, one of his intimate friends, in the spiritual world, you pray to that person. Uh, you ask that person for mercy. You also glorify that person. And you ask that person to help you develop friendly relationships with Krishna. And if that's not your rasa, then that person will lead you away to, away to another area. But if it's your rasa, then it'll develop nicely. But Krishna says, Suhidam Sarvadehi Nam. He says that in the a lot was that 15? One, it's 15? 1 5. Okay. Yeah. I'll ring the bell. And... So, in the yeah, that relationship in the uh, uh, on the spiritual platform is, is uh, eternal, but if it's not your relationship, then it'll be understood. But Krishna is the friend of everyone. He says that Bhaktaram Yagyatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshram Suhidam Sarvabhutanam Suhidam Sarvabhutanam. I'm the friend of all living entities. Suhidam Sarvadehinam. He also says it in another place. A friend is a person who has your best interests at heart. In the material world, we make friends, but that doesn't mean that person has our best interests at heart. So friendship in the material world is fraught with, with personal interest, and therefore it's not always, uh, well, we say satisfying. But with Krishna, it's perfect. So what do you do with a friend? You share your thoughts, you share your uh, feelings, you share your activities with that friend. So you can talk to Krishna like that. My dear Krishna, I want to do this for you today, and uh, this is what I did. You know, there's ways to have friendly dealings with Krishna. But to get support in that relationship, we should follow in the footsteps of one of his cowherd boys who, who have that rasa established. Is that something that develops as I become, did say, deeper in my Krishna consciousness and maybe uh, need the help of us uh, go in that effect? Yeah, that's true. As you go deeper, these internal moods start to develop. But again, you need the guru to help you understand. You can explain what you're going through, what you're experiencing, and then... Uh, get further understanding on how to practice. So for the time being, it's, it's nice to approach Krishna as a friend. And like you said, just like, just express to him what I'm thinking or feeling today, and how, like how I'd like to serve him or connect to his devotees. Don't try to be a, a friend in a superior position. There's three ways to be a friend, equal, superior, and inferior. Some of Krishna's friends are superior to him. And they can tell him what to do, and he loves that. And then there's those who are equal, and then there are those who are lesser. So um, there's three categories of friends. So we shouldn't try to jump up to, you know, like Sridham or uh, Madhu Mangal or uh, Ujwala. These are friends that are very superior, and they. Um, Many times they tell Krishna what to do. <laughs> but we don't want to 
pre, you know, that's pretentiousness, that's Sahajism. We don't want to jump up there. Thank you, Mara. It's really helpful. A lot to uh, reflect on and think about. Thanks, Alpesh Prabhu. Any other questions? So, Maharaj, while you are waiting for the question, I would like to ask one thing. You mentioned that devotional service is always perfect. And uh, we sometimes hear about, you know, devotional service can be done with the different uh, uh, modes of nature, like, you know, passion, ignorance, and goodness. Uh, so would you be able to elaborate on this, um, uh, Maharaj, uh, that how it's always perfect to our capability? Uh, that's, uh, that's what you mentioned, I think, yeah. Well, I can try to explain that whatever level that you're practicing on, that's, that's the level you're on. But you can increase your perfection. Mm. It's imperfect in relationship to the highest standard. But you can't say that whatever level I have is imperfect. It's just what we say, a lower level of perfection. That's all. Mm -hmm. Because any relationship with Krishna is perfect. Because it's the relationship that's perfect. That's what's, that's the perfection. And in whatever devotional service we do in that relationship is perfect as well then. Yeah, but then you always have to strive to make further advancement. That's why you have nine you have nine stages of bhakti. Mm -hmm. Then each of the stages has certain characteristics. So you can see as one makes progress, the perfection is increasing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, very sweet. <laughs> That is an always perfect at our relationship. So yeah, thank we'll you. Speaking, we'll be speaking more about that in detail at the uh, retreat in yes. USA. I hope everyone is coming. <laughs> we want as many devotees to come as possible. Yeah. Any other questions from any uh, other devotees? Any devotees? So uh, while while we are again waiting for Maharaj, I have, I have another question and it's always click in my mind that uh, death of Abhimanyu. Uh, how come like, you know, Subhadra was so close to Krishna and uh, how how did Krishna, I know we always, and you also mentioned in the class that, you know, whatever happens, it's not because Krishna is doing a devotee sometime, you know, try to blame Krishna that you have done this. But how Abhimanyu, did Abhimanyu? Abhimanyu is a warrior. And he was engaged in battle. When you go to battle, when Krishna was, I mean, how Krishna deals with each and every person is, is, is perfect. Um, with Arjun, when Bhishma Dev fought, you know, to his capacity to kill Arjuna, Krishna stopped, you know, came out and, and protected Arjuna. When Abhumanyu um, was, he was unfairly killed. Se seven Maharatis surrounded him. And even though he was a 16 year old boy, he fought amazingly against these most powerful warriors. But he was unfairly killed because they should, they ganged up against him. That's a whole story. And Arjuna took revenge against the person who arranged that. The thing called Chakra Vyuha is that when he was fighting, they created a circle around him so he couldn't get out of the circle. And therefore, he was forced to fight or die, and of course he wouldn't, there was no chance that he could win against these seven Maharatis. Thank 
Thank you, Maharaj. This shows that even at the Krishna's time, like uh, uh, this roping of Draupadi and how Abhimanyu was killed, this cruel activities had happened. Like, uh, you know, even people couldn't recognize Krishna when he was right in front of them. Uh, yeah, so really eye-opening. Eye yeah, we have that same problem. <laughs> the deity is right in front of us and we think it's a deity. <laughs> Deity is, yeah. deity is whatever form he is. He needs to start speaking to us, Maharaj. <laughs> Maybe. Prabhupada we don't said, hear. Yeah. You can, he probably said, you can speak to Krishna. But he said, Prabhupada said, he will not go speak from any, what any loafer though. Mm. You have to qualify yourself to speak to Krishna. Mm. Not that everybody, anybody can speak to Krishna. Mm. I was in no loafer class. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> but yeah, sure. you can you can always talk to Krishna to hear to to uh, to have a conversation with him is a little different. That's available too, but that's a higher level of Bhakti. But you can you can speak to him, you can tell him, you know, how much you're in Maya. <laughs> and ask him to help you. <laughs> yeah. That's true, Maharaj. And the and the more we see of how far we are, the, you know, yeah, just we are very far basically to seeing him and talking to him anyway. Yes. Is she the Vimati Mataji? Go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as Allah's to Shri Um, Guru Maharaj, um, I have a question regarding uh, Nishkama Karma Yoga, um, where uh, we, um, while, Bhagavad, while reading Bhagavad Gita, we understand that we have to renounce the results, or sorry, we should not expect any results, um, and without um, any expectation, we have to work and uh, do our prescribed duties. But... Uh, um, but how um, I'm unable to apply this in a practical way um, while, while working in this material world, um, because um, so we we do some work or we do um, some work and we expect results, but it will not work in that way which we, how we expect. And also, um, and if I want to apply or if I am trying to apply this particular principle uh, of Bhagavad Gita, um, I'm not able to understand like how Krishna, um, how I am um, able to renounce the activity because naturally we expect results, right? Um, um, when we do some work. Um, so how to apply this prin principle in our day-to-day -day life, uh, Guru Maharaj? I'm like little lost some connection between those two, between Krishna and... Uh, the, thing is, the thing is, you the, the results of your activities are not within your power to create. But you should aspire for, for for positive results. That you should do. You should know that it's not by your aspiring or by your activities that you know it will happen. It may happen, it may not happen. So therefore, one is detached from the results of the activity. But try to get a good activity. Mm -hmm. Try for the best in each situation is Krishna consciousness. But, you know, it's not that if the activity doesn't come out to our, we become, you know, less enthusiastic or lament. We always try to improve, that's all. Fruit of activity means you're trying to gain something from the activity. If you're not trying to gain something, you just want to make the activity nice so you could offer it to Krishna, that's that's bhakti. Okay. You're trying to get something from it, something, something material, that's true. Even if you're trying to get happiness from it, that's also part of the activity. Serve for the sake of pleasing Krishna, that's it. Yes, Kumaraj. Yeah, I've been listening like uh, 
yesterday i was listening to um, his grace radhe sham prabhu's uh, class um, so he was saying that uh, samshuddhi haritoshanam so everything we uh, do we have to please krishna um, so that's why i was thinking like uh, how krishna will be pleased um, in our material activities um, how that connection will come i'm i'm unable to figure it out so that's why i was asking um, well he's not pleased with your material activities but he, because you want to do them then he'll he allows you to do that because if it's necessary for you to live in a material world according to your desi desired desired ashram so and the grihasta you got to maintain the family keep the house up keep it clean husband has to work you're in that ashram. So you, you do it. You do it in a detached way. Huh? So basically, we have to um, give our 100% and do the activities nicely and uh, leave the results to Krishna and uh, be detached to the results. Yes, Guru Maharaj? Um, no. Okay, thank you. The results to Krishna. But try to remember Krishna and try to do things for Krishna in each and every activity, even when you're doing your your gona bhakti gona means parallel to your devotional service okay. bhakti is what krishna wants you to do that's bhakti mm -hmm. activities that may go under bhakti what you need to do to maintain your bhakti is parallel to to bhakti but it is also inclusive in the process of bhakti because it's necessary that's it. mm -hmm. Okay, very much. Yeah. Got Is that it. All right? Yes. Is that all right? yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, when you take sannyas, then you won't have all these problems. It's <laughs> 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 good, Raj. I was reading in the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, so <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> I was seeing that. <laughs> Thinking oh, to take sannyas, not... Mataji? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just. My brother is saying no in the background, but <laughs> good <Maharaj. laughs> Maybe that's sacred sannyas, not a prost or something. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Scarlet Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a wonderful class. Um, how do I, uh, how do we know uh, if everything what we do is really we are doing our best we are doing it and it's not that it's krishna who is um uh, controlling everything how do i know that for instance that i read uh, my books and i chant every day my sixth and round and i'm very uh, uh, adamant to not to eat uh, bad food and so on and so on and distribute book. How do I know this is me? How do I know that is it's well, not it's not me who doing it? It's yes, Krishna it who's doing it. No, you're doing it. You think you're Krishna, huh? No, no, I'm not. Krishna. No, of course oh, not. Oh my god, no, 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 no. No. No, that's what you're saying. What? No. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, how do I know that it's me who choosing and doing it and it's not the Krishna who's controlling it? You know what I mean? It's not that I mean, I, I'm the Krishna, never. I don't mean that. <laughs> He's given you the instructions. He's given you the guidance. You have to perform the activity. He says do it like this, just like he says, um, "What is that?" Yajna shasha sito shanto, munchite sarva kil bisha, munchite te agam papam. Is that last line? Karnat, the last one. Those who uh, uh, those who eat food simply for sense enjoyment eat only sin. 
So those who are, he tells you, eat prashadam. So if you eat boga, you're getting reactions. If you eat prashadam, you're getting purified. So you're choosing, he's guiding. He guides through the spiritual master, he guides through the material energy, he guides in so many different ways. He's not doing it, nor is he responsible for the results of the activity. You are. You're doing it, but you're taking his help. That's all. Thank you. There's a verse in the 17th chapter which describes the five. Maybe Sri Devi's pretty good at looking up verses. Where'd she go? Did she disappear? Uh, the five factors of activity. Anybody know that verse? Five factors of activity. So you're one of five, that's all. Every activity has five factors. You're, you're one of five. But still, you're one fifth. You're on mute, Sri Devi. <laughs> You've gone. <laughs> Disappeared. <laughs> Fell into the ozone. Mataji's internet is not good, good Maharaj. Oh, yeah, she's still in India. I Maharaj, I can share the verse if, I, if that's okay. Should yeah, I? Yeah. yeah, okay. You know the verse? Uh, I've just searched for five factors of activity. So this has come up 13, 13, 14, 18, chapter 13 and 14. So I'm not sure if this is the right verse. Can you see? Yeah, it's not mentioned there. These are declared in Sankhya philosophy to be the place of action, one. Two, the performer, you. Three, the senses, which you use. Four, the effort you make, the endeavor, and ultimately the super soul. Okay, there you go. Can you get over there? We're back to the kitchen. Okay. Five factors of activity. Read the verse and purport and everything will be clear. I've shared it in the chat for you, Mataji, if you want to have a look. Thank you. It's 18 point, uh, 13 and 14 verse, Bhagavad Gita. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Eight minutes left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, Revati Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have a question about uh, this material relations and spiritual relations. Uh, uh, as you mentioned that uh, we need to develop that intimacy with uh, Krishna so we can engage in um, pure devotional service. So I always have this like, uh, uh, like med can we like... Uh, you know, without satisfying our material relations, can we develop that intimacy with Krishna? As you said, material relations are like, you know, based on social material needs, you know, it's mostly like a condition, right? So we give and take, but still like we have to satisfy, we have to like how far we have to improve our relations and do as a duty so that Krishna will be pleased and... Uh, so... Okay, so read, go to Satyabhama, uh, ninth, ninth chapter, verse number 27. This is for householders, this verse. Yes. Okay, go ahead, uh, Ravati, read the, read the verse in purple. Ah, yes, go ahead. Um, uh, verse, uh, I cannot see the, okay, translation, Guru Maharaj, or should I read the verse also? Yeah, both. 
Okay, I can't see the verse because it's one size. No, no, not, not the Sanskrit, the translation. Okay, Kamish. So, translation, Slab by Slab Prabhupada, Slab Prabhupada Kiche. So, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities uh, you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Okay. Uh, so, thus, it is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any circumstances. Everyone has to work the maintenance of his body and soul together. And Krishna recommends herein that one should work for him. Everyone has to do something to live. Therefore, he should accept the remnants of the footsteps offered to Krishna. Any civilized man has to perform some religious ritualistic ceremonies. Therefore, Krishna, rec um, therefore Krishna recommends, do it for me. And this is called a archana. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity. Krishna says, give it to me. And this means that all uh, um, surplus money accumulated should be utilized in furthering the Krishna conscious movement. Nowadays, people are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours a day by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, rounds his beats. So he is uh, surely the greatest meditator and the greatest yogi as uh, uh, sub, uh, substantiated by the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you. Yes, Guru Mahesh. Whatever you do. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, Guru Mahesh. So uh, every activity, so we have to constantly have a check like whether it's according to the instructions of Krishna, whether Krishna is if pleased. You remember, just remember Krishna, okay? okay, so if you just remember Krishna, so activities auto automatically will become spiritualized. Yeah. So we don't have to put an effort uh, because I find it difficult sometimes uh, to, you know, dovetail all the yeah, just you, you can think, oh, I'm taking care of my children because they belong to Krishna, taking care of my husband because he's part of Krishna. I'm a householder. I have to keep my house clean because I'm a devotee. And the, one, of the cleanly, one of the principles of cleanliness is important. Therefore, this is Krishna's house. I live in Krishna's house. Everything belongs to Krishna. This is Krishna's, my body belongs to Krishna. Everything belongs to Krishna. Do everything for Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So the constant meditation should go on. Yes, yeah. stop, stop thinking in a dualistic way. Mm -hmm. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so we have three minutes left. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, devotees? The last answer was very good, Maharaj. Thank you so much. It was very, very helpful. Always remember Krishna and the, your activities will be spiritualized. Thank you. Srimati, what's the verse for tomorrow? Yes, Guru Maharaj, one second. Um, it's uh, si uh, sixth canto, ninth chapter, uh, 45, 45th verse, 6, 9, 45. 9.45, this is with Charlotte tomorrow? We're yes, Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Sangha, Charlotte devotees, and it's 20 minutes later uh, from our regular time. Okay. Yeah. 45, right? 6.9.45. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have to cut it off right at the hour nowadays. Don't have much time anymore. I have to do, end everything right at the hour. <clears throat> so if you have any questions, just hold them till tomorrow. Sri Devi's got her hand up. You got a, you got two minutes, Sri Devi, go for it. Sri Devi Mataji, I think she got disconnected. Oh, she got disconnected from Maran. Oh, she's here. Mataji, you're here, Sri Devi Mataji. Um... No, we can't hear you. <laughs> Bro. We can't hear you, Mataji. 
I stopped your video, Mataji. You can talk now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Mataji. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Quick question, Guru Maharaj. I want to know if we are trying to improve our devotional service, is that something which can masquerade as a material desire? Oh, I want better facilities. Oh, I want better uh, this and better that. Is that actually wanting to improve one's devotional service or just improve our material situation? You have to know what is the difference. Are you trying to improve your devotional service or are you trying to improve your material situation? Which one are you focusing on? If your material... Well, it's together material almost case. because uh, the the fact that I want to start my doctoring practice as well as continuing therapy means I need a proper facility where I can establish both. And so the search that I'm doing is for actually improving what I want to offer the devotees. But I worry that the time that I'm spending doing that, is that something that is taking me away from Krishna? or it is just anxiety to make my service better well the point is you can aspire for that but if you if you wait to do your service until that gets there and then that's then that's material you should be doing your service now in whatever condition you're in and if it gets better then that's fine well that's increasing i mean that's definitely in fact the the number of people coming is more and i'm offering more service in that way but the facility is not exactly conducive to offering really good service so that's my concern okay just pray pray to god and see what he says <laughs> okay think, all right thank you Guru i have answered that question six hundred and forty five thousand times already so i'm not going to answer again so <laughs> okay it's the same you sound like you know same old song <laughs> all right i still don't get it i must hear your classes again guru maraj you don't get it because because you don't want to get it that's why <laughs> if you want to get it you'll get it <laughs> Okay. So just buckle down and do the best I can with what I have. Hurry, <laughs> Okay. All right. You Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Want perfection? Go back to the spiritual world. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll see you with the Shara devotees tomorrow. Twenty minutes, a little bit later than normal. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you.